place with Prophetess Equilla Miller, right here on the New Creation Christian Network. Well, praise the Lord. This is Prophetess Equilla. I want to thank you for um, tuning in to the broadcast today, Times in the Secret Place. I'm here on assignment, hallelujah, to help the body of Christ, hallelujah, to help lead people to Christ, hallelujah, and just give you um, some encouragement in the word of God and from the word of God to encourage you to cultivate a one-on-one relationship, hallelujah, with God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here drawing you, drawing all men unto Jesus. And the purpose of this broadcast really Um, is to get you to see the importance of having a one-on-one personal relationship, having one-on-one fellowship and communion um, with God in your personal life, going before him in his word, in prayer, and in worship. So that's why the broadcast is entitled Times in the Secret Place, Because you must, hallelujah, make time to have, to spend um, one-on-one with the Lord. Amen. Now, today I want to talk about the importance of praying according to the Word of God. The Word of God is the revealed will of God for us. And it is found in your Bible, okay? 2 Timothy 3, 16, it says, The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives and it straightens us out and helps us do what is right. That same scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, in God's Word translation says, Every scripture passage is inspired by God, and all of them are useful for teaching. Okay, so I'm going to use the Word of God this morning, um, this afternoon, to teach you the importance of praying in line with the revealed scriptures, amen, the Bible, your Bible, um, is God's word, his covenant to us, and you have, you need to um, recognize the Bible as the holy word of God, and I'm telling you that enduring times of prayer that we must pray in line with the scriptures because the word of God is clear that God hears his word 
and that God will answer his prayer and that God will watch over his word to perform his word. Amen. So the next scripture I want to give you is 1 John 5, 14. And it says, this is a living Bible. It says, and we are sure of this, that he, God, will listen to us whenever we ask for anything in line with his will. Okay? Um, the same scripture, 1 John 5, 14, from the God's Words translation says, We are confident that God listens to us if we ask for anything that has his approval. So if it's in his word, it's his will. And so when we're praying, when we're asking, when we're petitioning God, hallelujah, for what those things that we need and even those things that we may be desiring, as long as it lines up with the promises of God as revealed in the scripture, then we can pray for those things and we can pray boldly and we can pray confidently knowing that God is listening. He hears us because we are asking according to his will. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 66, 19 says, but he, meaning God, <clears throat> listened, and he heard my prayer, and he paid attention to it. I have the confidence when I'm praying according to his will, when I'm asking something that's in line with the written word of God, then I truly have confidence that God is listening and that God hears. Hallelujah, the petitions and the requests um, that I'm making known to him. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. When I am praying, when my prayers line up, with the word of God, then I have confidence that God is listening and that God is hearing my prayers because I'm praying his will. And then the peace of God comes into my heart, hallelujah, because I can, I have confidence that God just heard my prayer. Hallelujah. So um, let me give you an example. If there is sickness and disease or pain and infirmity trying to come upon me, I know that the word of God says, hallelujah, that by the stripes of Jesus, hallelujah, I am healed. And as I begin to pray, Lord, I thank you, hallelujah, that you have healed my body, hallelujah, because your word says, hallelujah, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And I stand on that promise, God, and I thank you for the healing being manifested in my body and this pain going out of my body. Hallelujah. And I thank you that you hear me, Father, when I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Then you can know without a shadow of a doubt, you can be confident that God heard his word, that he hears his word. Now, um, Jeremiah 1.12 says, Then the Lord said to me, Write. I am watching to make sure that my word comes true, okay? So God is watching, hallelujah. Not only is he listening, hallelujah, and receiving the prayers of the saints, hallelujah, but he's watching over his word to make sure that the word of God is going to manifest in the lives of those who are in faith, who are believing, who are standing on his promises, who are speaking his word forth. Amen. Isaiah 55, 11 says, my word, which comes from my mouth is like the rain and the snow. It will not come back to me without result. It will accomplish whatever I want and it will achieve whatever I send it to do. So we as believers, hallelujah, we believe the word of God. We know that the word of God is our covenant with God. Hallelujah. We stand on that covenant. We stand on what the, the promises of God, and we speak the promises in our prayer times. The word of God must be in us. 
We must spend time reading and meditating on the word to get the word down in our heart, to get the word planted in our hearts, to get the word planted in our spirits, hallelujah, so that, hallelujah, during prayer, hallelujah, we could speak the word out of our mouths. We must sow the word into our hearts, hallelujah, so that during times of prayer, the word will come up out of our heart and come up out of our mouths. Hallelujah, and that God, then God is listening, hallelujah, to the prayers, hallelujah, of the saints, hallelujah, and he, hallelujah, will cause his word to come to pass. Do you understand that? That's the important, that's why you have to spend time in your word. That's why I'm encouraging you, hallelujah, every day, hallelujah, to set aside some personal time, hallelujah, to just read the word of God to meditate on scriptures, hallelujah, meditate, you know, if you're going through a situation uh, where you need healing, if you're going through a situation where you need peace, if you're going uh, through a situation, hallelujah, that you need to just, hallelujah, hope and encourage and, and build your faith, then you need to be getting scriptures, hallelujah, and meditating scriptures that deal with your situation. Hallelujah. Just build your faith and just fill your heart with the word of God. Amen. The word must be in your heart and the word must be in your mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to give you, hallelujah, I want to give you Psalms 1914. This is coming from the King James Version. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. See, the, hallelujah, the word has got to be in your heart so that it could come up out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 10, 8 says, however, what else does it say? The message is near you. The message is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart, the message of faith which we spread. So in order for the message to get in your heart, you got to listen to the words. Hallelujah. Whether you, you know, you got your iPads, you got your smartphones, you got your MP3 players, you got all kind of Bible apps. Praise God, we are blessed. Hallelujah. So you put that word on. In your car, you put that word on when you're going to the gym, when you're going for your walk, hallelujah, when you're having your quiet time, hallelujah, when you have your time to, you know, sit down and have your tea, hallelujah, or when you're at your favorite coffee house, hallelujah, you can put that word in your ear, hallelujah, you put those earbuds on, hallelujah, and you sit there and you just meditate in the word. Hallelujah. If right now, if you are in lack, hallelujah, if you need some financial increase, then you need to get you the scriptures on what the word of God talks promises are on provision and on prosperity and on increase. Hallelujah. And you get those scriptures and you begin to meditate. Hallelujah. I like to meditate Psalms 23. Sometimes I just take Psalms 23 Hallelujah, and I just meditated in the morning. Hallelujah, I meditated in at midday on my lunch, hallelujah, break. And then I meditated, hallelujah, in the evening before I go to bed. Hallelujah, and that's a, that's a psalm. Hallelujah, you know it, hallelujah. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah, and some translation says the word, the says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. I shall lack no good thing. And so you have to just listen to the word. And then you have to begin to just speak the word. Hallelujah. You're building your faith. Hallelujah. You're, you're sowing that word. You're sowing that seed of the word of God in your heart. Hallelujah. So that you can believe the word of God. Hallelujah. And then when you go before God in prayer, hallelujah, and you have needs, you could say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that your word says 
you are my shepherd, hallelujah, and and I shall not lack any good thing. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that these needs that I have, hallelujah, that this financial need, I need my rent paid, God, hallelujah, but I thank you, hallelujah, that you shall supply this need, hallelujah, because you are, hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh, hallelujah, you are my provider, hallelujah, do you get that? But unless you are spending time meditating the scriptures, meditating the promises of God, you won't know what to pray that's in line with his word. Okay? So I'm encouraging you on today. Hallelujah. To just, hallelujah, begin to, you know, whatever it is. Because, see, we live this life. We walk by faith and not by sight. And we got to live this our faith and our Christian walk. It's a daily walk. Hallelujah. And we fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. We have to lay hold of the promises of God. Hallelujah. We have to dig out the promises of God in the word of God. Hallelujah. You can't be lazy. Hallelujah. You got to make time. Hallelujah. To, to, to know the word of God for yourself. Hallelujah. This is a personal walk. How are you going to build your personal faith? Hallelujah. How are you going to walk with the Lord? Hallelujah. Walk. Hallelujah. In covenant. Hallelujah. With the Lord. Hallelujah. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Well, you. Hallelujah. Joe. Hallelujah. If your name is Joe, if your name is Jim, if your name is Mary, if your name is Susie, if your name is Linda, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to meditate this word and fill your heart. Hallelujah. And, and, and chase out all doubt. Drive out all doubt and drive out all unbelief. Hallelujah. And just begin to meditate the promises of God. Hallelujah. So he, he'll put your name in there. Hallelujah. Mary believed God and it was accounted unto her as righteousness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you got to, hallelujah, meditate this word so that you can pray this word back to God during your times of prayer. Now, let me give you Psalms 12 and 6. It says, the Lord's promise is sure. He speaks no careless word. All he says is purest truth, like silver seven times refined. Okay? So how do you know you can trust God? So hallelujah. How do you know you can trust the word of God? Because God don't lie. Hallelujah. He can't lie. Hallelujah. His promises are true. Everything he says is right. Let's read Psalms 34. I'm sorry, Psalms 33, verse 4. It says, for all God's words are right. And everything he does is worthy of our trust. Okay? Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. All of God's words. Hallelujah. Everything that you see in the Bible, all scripture, hallelujah, is true. Hallelujah. And you're going to have to believe that for yourself. Hallelujah. You're going to have to see the Bible, the Holy Bible. Hallelujah, as truth. You're going to have to see it as truth and receive it as truth. Hallelujah, and know, hallelujah, that God's word, hallelujah, is pure. Hallelujah, and know that God's words are right. And you're going to have to know that God's words, hallelujah, are worthy of your trust. Hallelujah. Psalms 33, verse 4, the God's word translation says, the Lord's word is correct, and everything he does is trustworthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you're going to have to, you know, believe the word of God. You're going to have to choose to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. Everybody who accepts Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, hallelujah, you have to make a personal decision in your life to believe that the scriptures, the Holy Bible, is his word. I gave you the scripture at the beginning of the teaching, Second Timothy 3, 
16 says, every scripture passage is inspired by God. Hallelujah. The Living Bible, I give that to you again. The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God. Hallelujah. So we have to believe. Hallelujah. That's why we are believers. That's why we're called believers. That's why Christians are people of faith. Hallelujah. Because you have to believe the word of God. That's why the word says, that without faith, it's impossible to please God, all right? So you're going to have to first get it, hallelujah, get a revelation and an understanding, hallelujah, that you must receive the Bible, that you must receive the scriptures as the word of God. You must receive the Bible. You must receive scriptures, hallelujah, hallelujah, as the holy word of God, and you must let God's word have authority in your life. Hallelujah. This is how you're going to, hallelujah, build your faith. This is how you're going to begin to, hallelujah, have a more effective prayer life. Hallelujah. You have to believe the word of God. When the word of God says that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. You must seek him in prayer. You must seek him in worship. Hallelujah. You must seek the Lord. Hallelujah. You must seek his way. You must seek his will for your life. Hallelujah. And his will is found in his word. Hallelujah. So you must believe that the Logos, hallelujah, the written word, the inspired word of God, hallelujah, that is the Bible. Hallelujah. You got to have a reverence for the Bible, huh? You, the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures. You have to believe in your heart that it is the word of God, that it is the word of truth. Hallelujah, that the word is a lamp unto your feet. Hallelujah, glory to God. You've got to get these foundation, this foundation laid in your life. Hallelujah, if you're going to have an effective prayer life. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you're going to have, um, if you're going to walk with God. Hallelujah, so I pray that you are encouraged on today. You know, Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, Jesus answered, Scripture says a person cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that God speaks. So as, as a believer, you know, as a Christian, as a disciple, a follower of Christ, hallelujah, you need the word of God. Hallelujah, you need the word of God every day. Just like you eat physical food for your physical body, hallelujah, to nourish your physical body, you need spiritual food. You need the bread of life. You need the bread of heaven. And that's the word of God. Hallelujah. You can't live this life, hallelujah, without the word of God. Hallelujah. The word is spirit and the word is life. The word is light. The word, it will light your path. Hallelujah. So you need to know the will of God. And the will of God is found in the scripture, in the word of God. And if you want to have confidence that when you go before God in prayer, then you must pray according to what the scriptures already say. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah, I just this is part one of this teaching, and we'll continue to um, go deeper into this teaching. But know that Jer Jeremiah 112 says that, you know, God, hallelujah, is watching to make sure that his words come true. So as you begin to pray the word of God over your own life, hallelujah, that God is watching. To make sure that word manifests in your life. And Isaiah 55, 11 says, 
again that my word which comes from my mouth it is like the rain and the snow it will not come back to me without results it will accomplish whatever i want hallelujah and it will achieve whatever i send it to do hallelujah so just like we have we're disciples hallelujah we do what god does we do what jesus did hallelujah we god that's why the word of god says you got to call those things that be not as though they were you have to speak things into existence the word hallelujah has life the word will create the word will perform it the word will accomplish things to come to pass in your life hallelujah that's why you have to know the word so that you can pray the word so that you can release the word out of your mouth hallelujah the word of god says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks that's why you got to put the word in your heart so that in times of prayer in times of supplication you can be speaking the word the word can come up out of you hallelujah and god will watch over that word and he'll bring that word to pass whether it's for healing whether it's for deliverance whether it's for peace joy prosperity hallelujah the promise is in the word find the promise find the scriptures that speak to those the thing that you are believing god for hallelujah and begin to meditate those scriptures listen to the scripture over and over speak the scriptures out loud read the scriptures out loud hallelujah just so that you get let the word of god get all down on the inside of you let the word of god renew the spirit of your mind let the word of god replace doubt and unbelief let the word of god re re replace wrong belief hallelujah this is why it's important to spend time in the word daily this is why it's important to have a secret place time when it's just you and hallelujah and the lord it's you and the and the word of god hallelujah you don't have to be worried about who's looking at you meditate the word who's watching you no that's why it's important to have one-on-one -on -one fellowship one-on-one -on -one communion that's why it's important hallelujah for you to make time and have a place hallelujah where you meet and fellowship with god hallelujah with the holy spirit hallelujah because he wants a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you hallelujah and you don't have to be ashamed to hold up your your needs before the lord all right so that's about our time for today and again we'll continue to go deeper into this teaching hallelujah in the weeks ahead hallelujah but if you do not know jesus christ as your lord and your personal savior i just say this simple prayer after me father god i come to you now just as i am i repent of my sins lord i ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness I believe that Jesus Christ is your son hallelujah that he died was buried crucified buried and that he rose again from the dead Lord Jesus come into my heart now and live your life through me hallelujah if you prayed that prayer hallelujah welcome to the household of faith i am prophetess equila miller if you want to learn more about me go to my website www.prophetessequila.com hallelujah and you can meet me here in times in the secret place every tuesday and thursday at 7 a.m and 7 p.m central time well i will be teaching and praying and prophesying to cultivate encourage you in cultivating a one-on-one -on -one relationship hallelujah with your lord and your personal savior jesus christ until next time God.